Keep it going, guys. Remember, you can, you will, and you must pass NCLEX. And we are live. This is the NCLEX RN, NCLEX PN, Test Anxiety Boot Camp. You guys get out your student workbooks. I am so happy for part two of this anxiety workshop. This has been such a game changer for many of you who struggle with test taking anxiety. And so this is an opportunity for us on day two to reflect about what we talked about on day one, which was identifying what type of anxiety we struggled with. Oh, it was so good. I'm, I'm here for the conversations. I wanted to start this off by saying, did you know, did you know that the NCLEX is changing? Yes, the NCLEX is changing. And this can be a cause for additional anxiety for my nursing student coming NCLEX. They're reimagining our NCLEX exam. And so I am going to be learning about it. I'm gonna be sharing the information about it with you guys. But I just want to know, did you know? Did you know that it's changing? And so I really want you all to be prepared to pass now. I don't want you guys to have to worry about all oh, the changes and the question presentations and you know all those things. So let's let's deal with the anxiety. Let's get the content. Let's and let's push on towards our goals. Push on towards our goals. All right. So that's what we're going to talk about. How to process this information. So again, this is part two. So if you if you have not taken your assessments, your anxiety assessments, I really do want you to go back to part one of this video and I want you to take the two assessments that we are um, that we have identified for you all. Um, and just going back to the changes for the NCLEX exam, we expect to see those changes in the year 2023. Whew, right? So I don't want you to still be studying during that year. So this workbook that you have that I'll be going over and the information provided by Regina Callion, MSN, RN, is intended for informational and educational purposes only, okay? It is not intended to substitute uh, your medical or professional advice, okay, if you need that. So again, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are excited about this topic because we know that anxiety, test taking anxiety affects your performance. And so we wanna make sure that we are putting the, the test in the proper perspective, but also really, really getting into how we can put anxiety in the proper perspective. A bit, let me do this before, because I do have a special, special offer for you. And it is this, during this event, I am giving you guys a coupon code of no stress, okay? No stress, and that will give you um, essentially an extra month into the NCLEX virtual trainer, right? It's a 90 day um, access. And if you put in the coupon code, no stress, you get a free month into the virtual trainer. So if you have out your workbooks, guys, we are gonna be filling in um, the day two portion of it. And the first thing that we see here are the, um, the fast fixes. And these are just things that you can do if you feel your anxiety um, is rising up on the test day. So the first thing that you can put in that box there is going to be earplugs. Earplugs will help you to increase anxiety uh, because you will not be getting the outside stimulation. And I have here construction grade earplugs. Earplugs. There are many kind, but the the construction grade. I'm going to go back to that web that that um slide. But the construction grade earplugs. You can pick these up on Amazon and they're about $15 and they are super effective in blocking out, blocking out noise. And so if you know if you suffer from a, a, an emotional or physical anxiety where you get overstimulated by other people, construction grade earplugs are something you can take inside of your NCLEX exam. There are not many things you can bring inside with you, but that is one thing that you can bring inside and it will help you to prepare to focus on the content. 
Um, and remember, what we're talking about, what we're thinking about are things we can do today, all right? Because with anxiety, you can actually train, you can actually train your mind, you can train your thoughts so that when you feel it coming on, you can begin to uh, focus your attention, redirect your attention on something more positive, something more beneficial for you. So you know how when we study psych and we're telling patients with uh, Alzheimer's, we're gonna redirect their focus. That is what we have to do, redirect our focus. So we're not focusing on the anxiety, we're focusing on our interventions, interventions. Okay, so um, we have earplugs. Chewing gum or drinking water, again, this will help you to move out of the place you are mentally, right? Mentally, this will help you to move out of the place you are mentally. And then, so you would definitely have to take a break in order to chew the gum or drink the water. They're not going to allow you to take those things in, all right? Um, but when you feel yourself getting out of control... All right. When you feel yourself getting out of control, then you're going to have to step back from out of the situation. So just taking a break for quick stretching, this is what is going to help you release the physical, the physical tension that you may feel rising up. OK, that you may feel rising up. And so remember, Anxiety is a response to changes in your environment. It's a, it's a response to something that's happening to you at the moment. So sometimes stepping away from that situation is going to help you burn off some of, you know, some of that extra tension or energy. So just think about it. Think about it. These are all suggestions. If you have other things that are working for you presently, go ahead and put it in the comments. I would love to read about it um, because we're working. We're working together. Now we're going to look at our physical anxiety, some things that we can also do besides the quick stretches, the drinking water. The, the first thing is called Belly balloon breathing, belly balloon breathing. Oh my goodness, this is so effective. Has anybody ever heard of belly balloon breathing? I want you to put it on the screen if you have heard of this before. Let me know um, because I have found myself using this in all types of situations, but normally, the idea is that when we are anxious, our breathing pattern becomes very quick and very shallow. It is a natural response to anxiety. When you are in flight or flight, fight or flight, you begin to breathe very fast and very quick. The problem is that when you breathe like that, you are not oxygenating anything. You're not because the breaths do not get down into the belly, like right? They don't get down into the lower part of your lungs where that alveoli is actually exchanging good oxygen, right? And so belly balloon breathing is the idea that you are making sure that each breath fills your lungs like a balloon. So the idea is that when you take in a breath, you actually feel your abdomen expanding because of the entry of air. And so I want us to practice these techniques. And I don't, if somebody's around, I need you guys to go to a place because we're going to do this. I want you to actually go to a place that is quiet and comfortable. I'm going to give you guys some seconds to do this. I want you to actually commit to doing these exercises with me because it is better for us to practice them. It is better for us to go through them together so you don't feel uncomfortable doing them on your test day. Because I'm telling you, when you're in a pinch, belly balloon breathing can help you to self-regulate. All right? All right. And so we're going to do it right now. Are you guys comfortable? Are you in a place um, that you can do this with me? 
All right. I close the door. There's nobody in the room but me and you. So we're going to do this. OK. All right. So with belly balloon breathing, we're going to breathe in to the count of four. Don't do it right now. We're going to breathe into the count of four and we are going to exhale to the count of four. All right. And um, remember, there's no there is no judgment here. All right. And think about this before we do it. If you experience anxiety and you are doing your belly balloon breathing, your mindset is not to focus on the anxiety. All right. We are just going to acknowledge it and and we're going to dismiss it. All right. So, for example, if you are reading a test question and you come across a medication you would never heard of before. All right. And you need to start breathing because you feel anxiety rising up. You are going to begin your breathing, right? And you are going to acknowledge that you have anxiety, but you're not going to say, oh, this is good or this is bad. We're not doing that, all right? Because we already want to focus our attention on what? On our breathing. So let's try it, all right? But that's the mentality. And these are my notes. We are, we are practicing refocusing. We are not acknowledging whether anxiety is good or bad, because at that time, there is no need for you to do that. You're not giving any energy to the anxiety. All right. So we're going to try breathing to the count of four. All right. Here we go. Ready, guys? We're going to take a deep breath in. Breathe in. One, two, three, four. And breathe out. One two, three, four. Okay. And did you feel your belly going out? Did you feel it going out that time? Let's try it again. I want you to take a deep breath in. One, two, three, four, and breathe out. One, two, three, and four. Okay. Now, the idea, again, is for you to influx new oxygen into your body, right? It's for you to focus not on the exam at the time, but focus on something more, which is your breathing, all right? Because your your cells are going to need oxygen for you to be able to think clearly, all right? Remember, we're not trying to go blank. We are trying to initiate new oxygenation. All right. Let's try it again. One more time. Breathe in. Inhale with one, two, three, four. And breathe out. One, two, three, four. Try to do that a couple times today. When you're studying, just take a pause and do some belly balloon breathing, right? And get comfortable with doing it. Because remember, what we're trying to do, everybody, and we have almost 400 people on, we are trying to build practices, 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 so that during the exam, we stay calm, we stay calm. The next intervention that I want to talk about, um, it is called progressive, progressive muscle tension. Okay. And relaxation. Go ahead and share this video. If you're learning new ways to deal with your anxiety. All right. Um, so progressive muscle tension and relaxation is simply this. And I, I love this one too, because again, it really helps if you have that physical anxiety. But what we're going to do is you have muscles, right, at these points. And so if you're looking at the chart, um, if, if you're looking at the chart, you have a, a forehead muscle, your eyes are muscles, your mouth are muscles, your chest, your stomach, your buttocks, your right leg, your right foot, your right hand. And so these are all muscles. And so what happens is we're going to tense them up and we're going to relax them. All right. And the reason why we're going to do that is because it is important for you during this time 
Two, it is important for you during this time to distinguish what relaxation feels like, all right? And it's important for you to be able to focus, again, that physical tension into something more productive. So we're going to do some progressive muscle tension and relaxation right now. And again, these are things that help with anxiety, but it could be anxiety related to your NCLEX exam. People use this to re reduce pain. People use this during labor and delivery. And so the things that you are learning, you will be able to share with your patients, right? Um, if you find that they're going through something, they're going through a procedure or something that's making them anxious, right? You will be able to be a resource. So we're going to start by, we're going to do some muscle tension and relaxation. And we're going to start with our hands, right? Because our hands are something that we can visualize and we can feel very quickly. So what we're going to do is we are going to do five seconds of tension and five seconds of relaxation. Okay, five seconds of tension and five seconds of relaxation. All right. And so we're going to start with our fists and we're going to clench our fists for five seconds and then we're going to relax for five seconds. Okay. And then we will move, we will move up. All right. So let's start. Are you guys ready? We're going to make a tight fist and we're going to squeeze it for five. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. Now relax that fist. Open up your hands. One, two, three, four, five, okay? So did you see the difference? Did you see how tight you are? And that's how we get with anxiety, all right? So let's try it again. Let's try it again. Five for tension and then five for relaxation. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, Five. Let's move up and let's do our wrists. So we're going to bend our wrists back, bend, bend your wrists back this way. And this is tension. This is tension on your wrist. So bend your wrist back five. One, two, three, four, five, and relax. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now these activities, I actually have these in the back of your um, in the back of your workbook. So there's pages where I list out all the steps for um, belly balloon breathing and progressive tension and muscle relaxation. So I want you to actually do the whole thing in your quiet time. I want you to find a quiet space, lay down in your bed, and I want you to read those instructions and practice that progressive much muscle tension and relaxation um, because it is definitely an exercise that if you do it from the top all the way down at the end of it you will feel relaxed and more in control all right okay now let's go on to the next to the next intervention and the next intervention is Visualizing NCLEX test day success. Oh my goodness. I really, really like this one. Um, and this is essentially a thought pattern that you have to, you have to ascribe to this thought pattern because, because on your test day, if you feel defeated, before you even go into the test, if you feel defeated before you even go into the test, then it's going to be difficult to combat anxiety. So let's try it. Let's try it, guys. I want to just try it. I have here the steps to doing it. When you are visualizing your NCLEX success, you are looking for, you are looking for how your experience will be. So you are imagining yourself waking up in the morning. Where are you sleeping at when you wake up in the morning? What does your room look like? Can you, can you imagine yourself driving to the facility? Okay. And when you're thinking about this, you're thinking about um, instances. Are you, are you anxious driving to the facility? Do you have anxiety driving to the facility? Um, what direction are you going? 
And so you're just visualizing you driving to the facility and you're not anxious. You're well rested. You're prepared. You have excitement, but remember the anxiety that you can have, some of it can be good anxiety. And so I, I love this picture. When I was when I was picking out this photo, I loved just the calm, confident smile that this young lady had. And I, I wanted that for all of you guys, right? And so um, when you get to the testing center and you walk into the testing center, you have all of your paperwork, you clear by the ID portion of it just fine. You go into the room, you see other people in the room, but they're not stopping you from doing well, right? And so you have to visualize all these things. You, 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 you sit in front of the exam, okay? And you're reading your first question, all these things, right? All these things are working together for your good. All of these things are working together for your good. You've done the hard work with God. It's possible. And so this is the point where you can speak life to yourself. If you're visualizing your test date, this is an opportunity for you to be able to speak words of encouragement to yourself. And listen, um, even if you don't have the, the words for yourself, get out some scriptures, right? Speak those things to yourself. I, I, I get where people say, I hear your voice in the exam. This is part of that process. You listen, if it's me, I, you can, you will, you must. If you can't think of nothing else, with God is possible. All right, you guys know how we do here. And so visualizing that test day, give me some other things people are saying, amen, amen. Um, Sophia says, I feel as though I'm being too cocky when I do that. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You are speaking and encouraging yourself because at the end of the day, who else is in there with you? Nobody. So you better bring your biggest cheerleader in that exam with you. And that's going to be you, right? And so don't think, don't think that people are not, uh, you know, gassing themselves up, but not really gassing themselves, but just encouraging you know, themselves during difficult moments. Uh, you know, some of us, when, you know, you guys know, I just had um, Shiloh six months ago and I was so nervous. I said, okay, I'm about to go in here and do this, right? <laughs> you have to encourage yourself when things are difficult. So we're visualizing that test day success. I didn't come this far. Listen, give me some more. Marie says, I didn't come this far not to fail. Um, Taja T says, I have the mind of Christ. I love that because you know that that mind is perfect without blemish. Um, oh man, uh, just praying. Uh, Tam says, I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have survived a hundred percent of your worst days. Uh, oh, there's so many more, right? Um, so let's take some time. Um, let's think about the things we're going to say to ourselves. And that's why visualizing your test date is so important. I love that too. Um, Armani, did I say that right? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I will pass in clicks. Yes. Uh, with Christ, all things are possible. Esther, absolutely. I can do this, Janu. Janu. Through faith and supplication. Oh my goodness. This is, this is the way that you are going to be able to combat that emotional anxiety, right? And so you begin to visualize your test date right now, right now. Um, I will, I can, I came so far, I trust God with all my thoughts. You, and Lulu says, Lulu, you can do this. You just gotta put your name in there. Regina, you can do this. Yes, all things are poss possible, <laughs> amen, amen. Um, and so, Right now, right now, make it your goal to visualize your test state at least one time and encourage yourself from the time you wake up, visualize yourself waking up, praising and thanking, visualize yourself eating breakfast, praising, visualize yourself on the way there, listening to your gospel music or just talking to yourself and encouraging yourself, visualize yourself greeting the lady or the man 
you know, with the, with the, I'm here to do this. This is going to be an amazing time. Shock those people, right? When you come in there thanking, thanking for, uh, you know, thanking, thanking the Lord, thanking, thanking every, you know, just, just, just being grateful for your license. That's what you got to come in there. Right. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. So the next thing is we're going to talk about tackling our emotional anxiety. We did the physical with our physical exercises. Um, now, what about our emotional anxiety? What are some ways we can deal with that? Because we can't deal with the emotional stuff physically, just like we can't deal with the physical stuff emotionally. So the first thing we need to do is address the cognitive distortions. What are cognitive distortions? Does anybody know Cognitive distortions are, they're, they're false things. They're things that you think about that are not true, all right? And so these are things that we do during the exam that we got to cut out. We got to cut out. And if this is you, just keep it real and let us know that you struggle with this. So the first cognitive, uh, the, the, the first, I have four there, but the first one is all or nothing thinking, period. All or nothing thinking. Who does this? Who does this? The all or nothing thinker says, if you miss one question or don't get everything correct, you just think you're a total failure. All right. So during the exam, you don't know one thing and you just say, I just, that's it. That's it. I failed this exam. I didn't remember what uh, I, I just did not remember what the developmental milestone was for a, a six month old. I could not remember it. So I'm a total failure. Do you do all or nothing thinking? Sometimes we do this in our study habits. If we think that it's going to take too long to study, we just don't do anything. If I cannot do my three hours in the virtual trainer, I'm not doing any of it, right? So all or nothing thinking is a cognitive distortion. The second one is overgeneralization. Overgeneralization. That is you turn one event into a pattern, into a never ending pattern. So for example, you say to yourself, because these are thoughts, you say to yourself, if I fail this test, I will never be a good nurse. If I don't pass NCLEX, I will never be a good nurse. Overgeneralization. You know what really burns me is when I see teachers doing this to students. When I, when I hear of nursing instructors doing this to students, it makes my skin crawl. When I see or hear about a nursing instructor telling a student they will never be a good nurse because they don't do well in their class, that is a huge overgeneralization and it's hurtful, it's cruel, it's mean, and it is why they say nurses eat their young. Sometimes um, seasoned nurses can be so mean and forget that at one point they were once a student. So overgeneralization is when you take one event and you make it throughout a lifetime, right? And, and so I want us to not do that. That is a cognitive distortion. And if you catch a person doing that, like your nursing instructor, I want you to say, you're crazy right now. You're crazy. You're having a cognitive distortion. And I'm gonna pray for you. All right, the next thing is disqualifying the positive. Disqualifying the positive. And that means you, you, you just, you reject, you reject the good experiences. You reject your wins so that you only focus on the negative, right? So that you only focus on the negative, all right? And so you, you, you don't hold on. And you know what? I was, I think I read somewhere, don't quote me on this, but I think I read somewhere that 
negative experiences, we attach ourselves to them a lot longer. They're, they're easier to hold on to for some reason because we get so emotionally flustered. And so if we do poorly in an area, we tend to, uh, we tend to hold on to that thing as opposed to thinking about all the things we're really, really good at. All the things we are really, really smart in and we really enjoy, but we remember the bad things, right? <laughs> so um, we don't want to do that. We want to accept all of the positives in our lives, particularly when it comes to this NCLEX exam, right? Because uh, that's what we're talking about here. But go ahead. I love the comments on the screen. Do you do that? Do you disqualify the positives? Oh, my goodness. And the last one is fortune tellers. Fortune tellers. Oh my goodness. Some of you guys are fortune tellers where you are so convinced that you will not pass this NCLEX. You will not pass this NCLEX that you actually, I believe it. You just, you just, I, I believe that you wholeheartedly just think, even as I'm speaking, I know I'm not going to pass this test. No matter what you're going to be a fortune teller. So I want us to get out of this. All right. I, I want us to speak positive, right? Speak positive to ourselves and understand that if our reality is not perceived accurately, if it's perceived inaccurately, that's going to make your test anxiety worse. So if you have done any of these examples to yourself, because it's you doing it to yourself, right? If you're accepting this, um, even if somebody else is saying these things to you, you do not have to accept it, all right? And if you're doing this to yourself, cut it out right now, all right? Because what it's doing, it, it's, like a, it's like a hamster wheel. Like you're making, it's making it worse. Your anxiety is worse because you have a fortune telling event. You failed in the past. And so you're saying, I'm going to fail this test forever because I did it one time. And so that's overgeneralization. And so it just makes our anxiety worse. So cut it out. We can, we will, we must. We can, we will, we must pass NCLEX, right? Um, so what we're going to do is we have, an ex we have this positive thinking activity. And we are going to read these statements. And we're going to turn it around for the good, okay? We're going to turn it around for the good. So I have here a very negative statement. I want somebody to tell me the positive to this. So our negative uh, statement here is, I received a low test score. I am not very smart. Now, if somebody said this to you, or if you said this to yourself, how could you turn this thing around? What would you say? Write it down. I want to read it. I, I, I want to know. I have my thoughts of what I would say, but I want to know what you would say. If somebody said, I received a low test score, I am not very smart. What could they say to themselves instead? Because the thing is, you, you guys know this, people will be watching this video for years. I guarantee you. I have people still watching my videos from 2000 and what, 14. <laughs> All right. So what, how, how can you respond to this? Um, I like that. I have to study a little harder. Yes, you are smart. Just study harder and study a little more. Absolutely. This is how it goes. All right. Um, and so this is practice for people with emotional anxiety. I like that, Nurse Robert. I did not prepare myself adequately, but that doesn't mean I'm not smart. All right, I like that because you know what? If, if your test score is because you didn't study, let's just call it what it is. It's not that you're, didn't, that you're not smart, it's that you didn't study. Or maybe, how about this? This is what I said. Um, I like that, Sophia. Keep pushing and review the material, try again. Lulu, I am smart, right? So I said this, I said this, and this is what I have to tell myself. A test score is only a measure of my performance on specific test questions on that specific day. It is not a measure of my ability, um, it's just say, or worth as a student or person, right? And so that's what I tell myself all the time. Hey, 
on that day, you didn't know those questions. But guess what? Another day is coming and you can answer some different questions. And so good. OK, so we got that. Let me give you another one. Let me give you another one. People say this, too. I really don't want to do this. I hate taking tests. I wish it was over. Oh, my goodness. You guys don't know how many emails I get. Hey, Regina, I really hate. I really don't want to do this. I don't want to take the NCLEX. I'm just going to do it and get it over with. I, I wish it was over. They, they are already. Uh, can, you, can you hear? Can you hear the disqualifying the positives? Right. They're turning this into a negative experience already. What would you say to somebody that was testing tomorrow and they said, I really don't want to do this. I hate taking tests. What, are, what if you're saying that to yourself right now? I don't want to study. I don't want to do this. I don't want to. I don't want to. And, and, and I, I like it. Some of you guys are like, oh, my goodness, this is so me. This is so me. Um, but you turn this very positive into a negative and you begin to re you begin to project <laughs> that negative. So I like that. Mary says no pain, no gain. OK, I like that. Uh, Janu, I will do this and push through. OK, Betty, never give up. Hey, I like that. Go in there and do the best you can. Go in there and do the best you can. This is what I said. Today is my opportunity. Let's go. Right? I cannot wait to show all the hard work I've been doing. I cannot wait to celebrate my successful completion. Once this is over, I'm going to be 100 pounds lighter. Let's go. I want to buy myself, you know, that, 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 whatever I wanted. I'm going to take myself out to eat. Like, you guys have to turn this thing into a positive. This is your opportunity. I'm about to level up. I'm about to make another extra grand on my paychecks. This is it right here. And so you have to be able, what else do we got? Go in there, do the best you can. I need to focus, focus, focus. Yes. Um, this is how we have to think of this exam. Do not let anxiety take you out of the positives of this situation. So many positives, right? The board didn't lose my paperwork. I graduated from nursing school. I, I, I have so much to do. I will do this and succeed. Yes. Oh my goodness. This is how we have to do it. All right. Next negative statement I want you guys to turn around is this. It does not matter how much I study. I will not pass this test. Oh, my goodness. I, I mean, that's definitely uh, fortune telling here. And now I love that you guys know the definitions of what's happening and what you do um, to yourself. <laughs> All right. This is what this is what it's called. Now, you guys know this is fortune telling. It does not matter how much I study. I will not pass this test. Have you ever felt like that? That's a real feeling. That's a real that's a real feeling, honestly. Um, and I can acknowledge it because sometimes you look at a goal and you say, I can't do like I I cannot do it. I cannot do it. Right. Um, and so uh, you guys are saying, I will get my Remar Blue Roses. I follow the VT. I can, I will, I must. Hello. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, what else? What else do we have? It does not matter how much I study. I will not pass this test. How about this? Follow the VT. You will feel confident. Um, how about um, it does matter how much I study. I'm going to study enough to pass the test. Yes, absolutely. Um, I do not believe I will fail the test. Yes, you have to have faith. Uh, Nicole says you made it through nursing school. You can make it through NCLEX. Awesome. I like this is better fortune telling. This is better. You made it through nursing school. Yes, yes, yes. I will be getting my Remar t-shirt. I'm going to ace this test. This is much better fortune telling. You guys turned it around. You turned it around. I know what I'm doing. I will succeed. I love it. I love it, guys. And so this is all helpful. Trust me, the Remar community, 
We needed to have this conversation today. This conversation was absolutely essential. All right. Um, how about this one? All right. The studying I do will lead to being successful. There will be something on the exam that I do know. Um, I will I will try my best. There will be information that I do know. I will I'm ready to show my hard work. Right. I'm ready to show my hard work. All things are possible. If you just believe I can, I will, I must, I will get my license in the name of Jesus. Call on his name. Listen, there's power. I will pass this test. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. How about this one? All right. This is my last one, guys. All right. This is my last one. I want you guys to straighten this one out for me. Everyone else is finishing the test faster than me. They must know all the answers and are doing better than me. Okay. All right. What do we say to that? Everyone else is finishing the test faster than me. They must know all the answers and are doing better than me. And remember, we're turning this around into something positive. We are turning this around into something more appropriate, more appropriate. All right. Slow and steady wins the race. Stay positive. Yes, I get it. You you will and you will pass. You're well and you will pass. OK, what do you say to that? Um, what do you say? And Elsa's like, that's me. And I need to stop that. I am not concerned about other people. I am doing this at my own pace. I am doing this my way. Yes, I love that. Take ownership. This is your day. This is your test. You can do it. It doesn't matter if people are finishing faster than you. Yeah, you're not racing against anybody. You, you are your own competition. And you have been very stiff competition with the negative self-talk. So today, you know, all the things come to those who wait. Keep your own pace, right? I will run my own race, run my own race and finish to the finish line. All right. Don't be caught up in what other people are doing. All right. They could be all failing. So I want you guys to know that doing a test quickly doesn't mean the answers are correct. Maybe those people just gave up and just started clicking, 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 right? Just to get it over with. So you need to do this at your own pace. I love this, Nicole. What God has for them is for them. But what God has for me is for me. Okay. Oh, I love that. Right. And what God has for you, the door that he opened, no man, you guys already know, finish it for me. When God opens a door, uh uh-uh, no man, right? Um, Lulu, I will take my time and do my best and do it on my own pace and pass. Yes, 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 yes. All right, and shout out, shout out to everybody who's coming on here saying they passed. I appreciate it. The race is not to the swift, but he who has endured to the end. Oh my goodness. Thank you guys so much for those positive self-talks. Let me give you your test day plan because we are wrapping up here. You guys have so much, so much now to to contemplate on, to prepare, to, um, to put into practice, right? You have the interventions. I really want you to go off and give them a try and continue this positive conversation with yourself and each other. Here's my test day plan. (laughs) wear the same outfit that you have been studying in. There are some things that you can do that will absolutely help you to be in the right mentality. And if you, like myself, who tend to wear the same things over and over again, you guys know every time you see me, I'm in something remark, right? And so for me, I I spend very little time thinking about what I'm going to wear, right? Because I'm giving that attention to something more important. So I tend to wear the same things over and over again. Right. So when you're studying, hey, why don't you just put on your favorite comfortable sweatshirt and go into the exam wearing that same thing? Right. Um, Also, read the directions carefully. 
you guys know reading is fundamental and we miss so many of the easy NCLEX questions because we refuse to read. We just are not reading. That's all to it. You guys are just not reading. So we're missing a lot of questions because of that. Also, remember the deep breathing exercises. I feel like whether you have physical or emotional anxiety, those deep breathing exercises help. They work. So remember to do them and absolutely slow down. This is this is your race. This is your race. And it, it's not a sprint. It is a marathon. So I'm so happy that we, you know, we were able to do this workshop. I am so happy that you guys gave me the opportunity, gave me the opportunity to help you through this. If you have your worksheets, continue to go through them, continue to make this thing a reality, make this thing a reality. Also, if you need to have your studying portion uh, capitalized, because I do have a special, special offer for you. And it is this. If you need to get your NCLEX preparation down, right? If you need to study and you're ready to take the next step in getting your license, you have uh, you have a mindset, okay, I, I did struggle with test taking anxiety. I did not do well on the exam. I want to try it again. Get into my NCLEX virtual trainer. You guys know that is where I do my full NCLEX review. It is a four to six week program and you will be ready for your license. And if you want to join into the virtual trainer, it is super simple. You just go to remarnurse.com. And during this event, I am giving you guys a coupon code of no stress, okay? No stress. And that will give you um, essentially an extra month into the NCLEX virtual trainer, right? It's a 90 day um, access. And if you put in the coupon code, no stress, you get a free month into the virtual. Hey, Remar family. This is Diana, and I am here to give my testimony about passing the NCLEX. In March, I finished nursing school and I signed up for the Remar virtual trainer, which I received in like three days. I started it. I did it. It took me about six, seven weeks. I finished the whole thing. I finished the workbooks and everything. And then I took my NCLEX this weekend and I passed. I could not do it without the help of Remar Virtual Trainer. And I loved it. I love the virtual trainer. It's like being in class, finish the whole thing. You can, you will, you must pass this NCLEX. So I want to actually take you guys inside of the virtual trainer so you can see what it is like when you become a student. So the virtual trainer has the benefits of being available to you at any time, day or night. And this is really significant if you are um, working during your NCLEX study process, if you have children during your NCLEX study process, that it's not possible for your lifestyle to sit in a class all day. So the virtual trainer allows you to train with me anytime, day or night. When you first sign up for the virtual trainer, you're gonna get instant access to the platform that you can jump right in. And at the same time that you're getting instant access, Team Remar is, they are shipping you, they're shipping you your books, but you can get started right away. And that is why students love it. I want you to start in the training center. So click on the training center because this is where you will do your learning. This is where your, your recorded lectures that I have presented will be. All of the lectures are taught by me. So you know exactly, you know exactly who you're getting when you sign up for the virtual trainer. This is my program that I created. I've been helping nursing students for over 10 years to pass their exam. So you guys know me, you know how I like to teach. While you're waiting for your books, you do the before the books arrive section. It only makes sense. These books will come to you in about three days. So what do you do in the meantime? You get on in here in your virtual trainer and you hit up this before the books arrive section. And the great thing about this is this is all fundamentals. All of these units will help you pull out the cobwebs, get everything ready for the learning that's gonna take place. 90 day 
um, access. And if you put in the coupon code, no stress, you get a free month into the virtual trainer. All right. All right. So I hope to see you in the VT studying as well. So you have two things that you're doing. All right. Number one, if you have not built out your worksheets for this event, you need to do it because it's going to help you with your test anxiety and preparing to receive the interventions. That's the first thing. So you can do that. The second thing is getting into your NCLEX virtual trainer and continuing to study with these tools that you are going to be learning. Okay. Um, I am expecting a lot of my nurses to pass NCLEX in the month of April and in the month of May and in the month of June. Okay. So I want you guys to be prepared fully with the virtual trainer and the workbooks as well as the test anxiety um, interventions. All right. Remember, remember, this is a Remar Review, and this is our um, anxiety workshop. It has been amazing success. Thank you so much for the comments. I'm just loving the comments here. Uh, you guys have been transparent and totally supportive to each other. This is the NCLEX Anxiety Workshop. You can, you will, and you must pass NCLEX. Hi Remar, hi Regina. I just want to say thank you for helping me. Yes, I passed my NCLEX RN on my second take. I was a graduate from the Philippines 10 years ago, so it's hard for me to remember all the things that I've studied. Is that they're very, very good on content. So what I did, I purchased it on January. And on January, um, I started to review for my content. Every day, I read for three hours, I watch for three hours, but the only thing that always keeps on my mind when I'm taking the exam already is the virtual trainer. I always read quick facts. Four times, five times, I read quick facts. So I just want to say thank you, Regina. Thank you to Almighty God, to our Almighty God for helping me, for knowing you guys. And yes, I can say, I can, I will, and I passed. NCLEX. Thank you. God bless.